Welcome to Collectors Canvas, the podcast where we explore the world of sports card collecting and the captivating stories that collectors bring to the table. I'm your host, Aaron, the president of Tropic Collects, and today we have a very, very, very special guest. Please welcome to the podcast, Mojo himself! What's up, Mojo? How's it going? Good man, I like the game. That's pretty good. <laughs> going good? Yeah, doing good, man. How you doing? I'm doing good. We are so excited to have you. Your journey from filming in high school to the evolution of Mojo Sports is truly remarkable. Could you share with us how it all began? Uh, yeah, man. Okay, prompt me with the question. Let's go. Okay, bat. Could you share with us how it all began? Like how your journey began? Yeah, man. So I started collecting in 2009. I started collecting cards, getting autographs. And I started with, you know, just going to games and getting autographs and then opening packs of cards right when I was 14. And I used my to age. 14. There you go. Yeah. And I started to record mail days and show my collection. I started collecting DeMarcus in 2010, 11. But my first roots into collecting were baseball cards and getting autographs at games and stuff like that. So I started filming back then and just kind of kept it going. Do you have any of those like cards to show that you had from like your early childhood? You know what? I think if I still have it in here, I don't know if I do. I had the first, I had the first pack of cards I ever opened. I I usually keep it on my desk, but it was, I don't think I have it on me, but. Your big kid can. Pretty some other stuff. Seen. Let's see. Let's see. Just. I don't know. I don't really have. I don't have it on hand, but I remember my first pack of cards. I have it somewhere, but I mean, I've been collecting Demarcus for a long time, so. I mean. Stuff oh like, wow. Um. Do so you have like some crazy Demarcus? Yeah. Is he your favorite player? Oh yeah, he's my, definitely my favorite player. So. Yeah, I don't have all the cards. I mean, I do have all my cards, but I just don't have the first ones offhand. But, you know, I, you know, I, I try, like, my my thing is to keep it all, you know, keep all the original stuff when I can. Back, even when I was a kid, I wanted to keep, like, a personal collection. I'm like, maybe when I'm, like, 30 years old, I can look at all this. <laughs> and here you are today at the I age know. of 30. <laughs> I'm, I'm, well, I'm 28. I'll be 29 next week. Oh. Yeah. Oh, sorry. I took no, it a little good. too far to go back. No, you're good. Yeah. So, like, what autographs did you get in, like, your early days, I guess? Yeah, some of the early autographs. I mean, man. I'm like, what is it, baseball? No, there were a lot of baseball, but also a lot of basketball. Like, I had met Kobe Bryant when I was, like, 15. Oh, um, wow. Yeah, That's that was a big amazing. person to meet. And then mostly Sacramento Kings players. And then, you know, some of the older NBA players, like Kevin, not Kevin Garnett, but Paul Pierce. I met him and guys like that. So back, back in the day, I met DeMar DeRozan when he was a rookie. I'm sure you know him because Raptors. I actually have a DeMar somewhere in my case right here. Should be. I'll just take a minute to find it. Yeah, you're good. It's pretty sick, actually. Actually, really sick DeMar out. DeMar, DeMar was a great guy. When I was – when he was a second year in the league, I had a bunch of his rookie cards, and I think he signed six cards for me. And I was just Oh, like, wow. But DeMar was always really cool. There we go. Oh, I love that. That's sick. Number That's to the 700. Full name, the full name letter auto. I remember that set, Panini Threads 0910. Yeah. That was like my, my- first year. my first year collecting was that year. That's sick. So you have a lot of curry or no? I used to. <laughs> I mean, I I did. Obviously not anymore. I wish. <laughs> I've got my Zion case and stuff. I didn't know we were getting into it, but I can see if I can find one here. One of my first a couple autographs of Steph Curry. I, I kept – the good thing is when I was 14, I kept a lot of this stuff. Nice. When I was a kid, and a lot of it's like really – you can tell it was signed a long time ago, some of the stuff, but – it just depends. I, I assume you didn't get, you didn't get it by uh, PSA or something? No? No. I mean, all these should be PSA'd. I mean, <laughs> there's some really cool ones in here. But uh, like the Aaron Fox. Oh, wow. That's a cool That's crazy. one. Like I got Rogers to sign this one last year. 
Well, you, you actually have some cool cards. Yeah, I do. This is the best one, though. <laughs> really is. I don't have any. I don't have the Currys on me right now, but I have these. These are my refractor signed rookies. Oh, Rogers! Holy. Yeah, those are cool. But yeah, anyway, back to the. I mean, back to the story. Like, I just, yeah, I got a. I definitely got a lot of autographs. I mean, that's how I started. The, my thought process in it was, it was they were base cards, so it's like, why not get them signed? You know, I thought it was cooler to get their autograph on it, so that's what I did. And transition to that, started going to the card shop. My mom used to take me to Target to go open <laughs> packs of cards. You know how that is. And we used to yeah. have a Target in Canada, but now we don't. Wow, they got rid of Target. That's ridiculous. Yeah, apparently they got bankrupt or something. I don't know. <laughs> you go to Tim Hortons and get cards? Because we figured that out. Yeah, we have a Tim Hortons. They yeah, do they, do they, ho- they sell cards there. They do hockey cards during the hockey yeah. season. When I was in I was at the Global Expo, what's his name? Oh, Ben Carlos, my friend. He's from Canada. He took us to Tim Hortons. Oh, and my boy <laughs> Eli. They took us to Tim Hortons to get sports cards through the drive thru. Oh wow. That is like, they don't do that in America at all. <laughs> I wish they did basketball because I'm literally basketball. I only collect basketball at the moment. Man, we got to get Fanatics and Tops to start putting them in the A&W or whatever they have over there, the drive throughs Yeah, McDonald's. <laughs> oh my gosh, that'd be sick. That would. So anyways, like that's absolutely crazy. How do you decide on what on what content you should cover? Like, how, like, do you, do you plan it on like a book? Or like, what do you do? Man, it's it's interesting with our content because a lot of it is kind of record as you go type thing. Like when we went to Canada, we did improv. Like, yeah, improv. I mean, yeah, I mean, nothing in our stuff is really like we. I mean, we've never scripted anything. The only thing we have done is prepared content. Like we try to do that sometimes, but. When I did the tour, for example, the Motorsport Summer Tour, we did talk to the shops beforehand and said, you know, we really want to highlight the story of what's going on in these card shops. And they were really into it. And we really, our goal for that was to empower the card shops. And, you know, we wanted them to be successful, but we also wanted companies like Tops and Fanatics to see the value in local card shops, you know, and Panini, obviously, but... Mm -hmm. That was a big one. So I guess in terms of planning the content, it just depends. If we're doing like a tour where I'm going on road for five weeks, we do have to think about it. But like I have Burbank Card Show this week and I'm kind of going into it with like, I want to plan a couple things out, but it just depends. Like we're trying to diversify the content. It just depends how how much we want to be different. Mm -hmm. Can you walk us through like your content creation process? Like, yeah like how is it made yeah so i turn on the camera and then <laughs> record no i'm just kidding i mean honestly that, that is what happened i mean man so for example we'll record like a vlog so i'll be in burbank so I'll, i mean i know going into it day zero i want to record the behind the scenes getting there the first introduction setting up our booth especially with this burbank we have a banner now and we're going to do some oh really, wow yeah, we're going to do some different stuff at this so the, i guess it is kind of planning we film essentially what I do is I film, you know, a day, day zero, day one. And then when interesting stuff happens, I like to split it up and we put in a Google drive and then I have an editor in New York and he edits the content as we go. And he'll typically, I'll tell, I'll split the files. So I kind of play the director and I put certain files together that I think will coordinate with the story. And then he kind of mixes and matches and cuts out all the edit, cuts it all out. Um, but before I had an editor, like, so something people don't realize is I had a guy named M chief who was my first camera guy recording for me. He used to sit in the hotel until three, 4 AM and edit these videos on the same night. And then I, I would stay up till 2 AM on certain days. And I would, I would go to trade night. I'd come back to the hotel and I'd edit a video so we could get it up. And that's, it's crazy, but like shout out to everybody that makes it possible. Like I couldn't have done it without my first camera guy, M chief. And then I have JD now, and then Bill, Bill Grass recorded for me too. But you just, you need a team, you know, at some point you need a team. I mean, I did it by myself at some level, but I, I couldn't have done it without these people. And then my tour, 
you know, AG, she was the tour manager and she crushed it. I couldn't have done it without her. So you kind of like, I don't know the process. It's not just me. It's, it's a whole team, man. Mm -hmm. So like, how do you, how do you ensure that you stand out? Like I've seen you wear merch before. I've seen you wear a Mojo merch. Yeah. I mean, there was a time when I was just running through a rotation of a Soprano shirt, the, (laughs) <laughs> king shirt and some other stuff and then i realized like i wanted to wear my merch that we don't have for sale right now but i just i mean it i'm not i don't know this is funny to say but it's like i'm not worried about like people recognizing because it always happens but i guess in the beginnings like i have to think of it i can't think of it like where we're at now with the forty thousand subs i need to think of it as when i first started wearing the t-shirt was really important like our very first t-shirt i wore the t-shirt for the first I don't know, like four months. And then I was like, I just want to wear whatever I want now. But for branding purposes, I wore the shirt, bro. And then now, I mean, now I wear other people's stuff. I mean, you know, these guys from Canada, Mint Inc. Like I wear other people's stuff because I want to show love to other brands. Yeah. So I don't know. I'm definitely going to hook you up with some Tropic Flex merch. (laughs) If if anybody, honestly, anybody watching this, if you send me merch or you want me to wear merch, I wear a double XL in the t-shirt and then whatever hat. (laughs) <laughs> I'll wear your merch. I wear people's stuff all the time and they're always shocked. They're like, wow, he's wearing it. It's like, I just like representing other people. When you come to Toronto, if you come, I'll definitely give you something. All right, I'll rep it. A couple stickers, a big merch package, I'm sure. I'll take it. Um, so like, what advice would you give to like a new collector? That's a great question you should find a PC. PC means personal collection. Even back then when I was collecting at 14, I knew, I knew, I mean, I have cards from DeMarcus that like, (laughs) I I mean, they're from when I was a kid and I still have. You may think that this PC is a crazy PC. What is it? Who's that? Banton. (laughs) Oh yeah. I mean, he's cheap, right? Uh, Or is he like. This is a big overpay on mine. I paid it's a national treasure auto, though. Yeah, but yeah, it's, I, it's you. I paid it's, 500 bucks over call. But it's priceless, right? Like, for you, you know that, like, that's your team, right? Like, you're tapping in. Like, it's not my team anymore, if I have to be honest. Why? Grizzlies. You're a Grizzlies fan? Dang. Okay. Well, who are you going to collect on the Grizzlies then? Desmond Bain? Who's that? Can't see. Ja. Ja ja. He's cheap right now. He's cheap. I know. No, but yeah, I would, my advice would be for people to find a PC. Yeah, hundred percent. Because like the money comes and goes, man. You know that. Look yeah. at that. Yes, there sir. I remember owning that card. What? I used to own that card, but I owned it. It was a PSA ten. I traded that. I've, I've owned cards like that where I, you know, like if you've seen cards enough, you're like, oh, I've owned that before. Yeah. Yeah, that's cool. This is definitely one of my favorites. Oh, sure yeah, a clean before. rookie. Mm-hmm. Oh, you know your cards, I see. <laughs> oh yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, to an extent. There's <laughs> when I was in Canada, I didn't know a lot about hockey, so I was Did tough. you do autographs? John Morant. Mm-hmm. That's sick. You knew it. My favorite player at the moment. That's cool, man. I like that. Mm-hmm. Even though he's like gun stuff and stuff. I, I think he's going to come back and do yeah, well. I mean, you got to root for a guy like that and just hope that he does does better, you know. And he, a lot of people, like you're 14, you look up to him. Like I looked up to Kobe at some level, even though he was rival of the Kings. I looked up to Kobe and, and Kobe had done some amazing things off the court, especially toward the end of his career. You look up to these guys. So you, you know, not not only do we collect them, but you ex- you hope that they. Yeah. It's not just what they do on the court, man. It's what they do off the court. Like Demarcus, like people have a bad rep, rap of him, but he was great to me off the court. Like, and he was great for the community. So it's like, it's guys like that. You just you you can root for him. Even De'Aaron Fox, I love him. He's a great guy in our community. You live so, in like, Sacramento. Uh, or no? What? You don't live in Sacramento. You live in California, um, don't you? Yeah, I live in California. So I I, I was living in L.A. Obviously. I move around a lot, so I don't really have a home base right now. We're going to be traveling. (laughs) We're going to be traveling a lot. Are you at home right now, or are you just at, like, a hotel? Oh, no, I'm at home. Nice. Yeah. Always cozy to be at home. 
Yeah, of course. I'm planning on making it to the national this year. Oh, oh yeah, it's in Cleveland. It's closer Cleveland. to you. Yeah. yeah, it's closer. Yeah. It's supposed to be really good. It should be good. What was your impressions on the on the national uh, this year? It was pretty hot in there. Like, <laughs> it, we were sweating. The AC broke. I heard. <laughs> yeah, but it was a good time. It was a great experience. The, na- the national for anybody watching, it's a must must go experience. I always tell people skip a card show or skip like buying a card budget your money so say you're going to spend a thousand dollars on this like i don't know like a scotty barnes autograph but you want to go to the dallas card show just don't buy the autograph like budget your money so you can go to a show and you got to go to the national and book your hotel now you might as well <laughs> it'll be cheap it'll be cheap right now but the national is an experience you can't miss like it's not about the transactions it's about the relationships and like the people you meet and the late night trade nights and, you know, just the memories, they're priceless. And anybody that says like the national is too expensive and, and, and it is, it is a very expensive trip. Um, but if you can go to one in your lifetime, it's worth it. But I wasn't able to go until I was some 28. So I went to my first national I was 25 years old and I, I wanted to go 14 years old. I wanted to go, couldn't afford it. 15 couldn't afford actually probably could have afforded it by that time or no 16 (laughs) played football couldn't go 17 18 was just prepping for college so it's just like if the time's right you got to go of course trying to just think of more questions honestly (laughs) you have any suggestions (laughs) yeah let's see what advice do you have to Mm -hmm. any kids coming into the hobby or any any new collectors what advice would you give them coming into the hobby i would tell them don't focus on comps <laughs> that's the best thing to do sometimes i just go to shows go in blind and get crazy deals and sometimes i just take massive losses in shows and i go in blind but like comps is basically like it doesn't like sometimes it doesn't make sense like like right now like you like like this like this Kareem could sell for like a buck right on eBay that'd be a comp that'd be that'd be called the last recent comp. Yeah, I it, mean on, on something like that, like right, you base it on the average, but yeah, if, if one went for a dollar, the last comp doesn't mean it's a dollar. Like you have to go on the average, but also some stuff on eBay is not paid for, so it's like that's a whole other yeah ball. show baiting. And, like yeah. people can mess with that stuff, so. I don't know. I go into things like, I don't know. I'm a little different with it, but it's like, if I buy like I actually, I pulled this. I pulled this during our tour. It was pretty crazy. Oh, wow. Devin Vassell, rookie auto to 10 to, eight. to 5. Eight. To 8. This hasn't oh, even come wow. out yet. But like, if I'm going to buy something like this, right, I got to think about, it's not, also, I got to think about what I can pay for it, but it's like, what can I actually sell it for? What would I sell it for? You know? Because if I, and it's also got to be liquid. If it's not a liquid card, it's like, it's a waste. You know what I mean? Like you got to buy the right stuff. If you buy, if you spend $300 on, you know, Sam Howell, but you know, Kenny Pickett's going to be the star. You got to just, it's such a gamble, dude, but you have to like, it's, it's all a gamble. Yeah. Li- literally the entire hobby's a gamble. Another thing that I'd say. But that's why you got to have, boxes. that's why you got to collect, but that's why you got to collect and have fun. Like yeah. that's why you actually need to collect. Like, you you if everything went to zero would you be okay and my answer is yes yes because i have made amazing memories i've built my collection and can't beat it yeah me too <laughs> yeah i mean there was times in my collecting when i was like i couldn't even afford certain cards and now it's like they're cheaper than they've ever been and like there's always those guys right the the guys that everyone thinks going to be good, like Otto Porter Jr. He went to Georgetown. Mm-hmm. I don't remember this, but I do. Like everyone thought that guy was going to be good. And he was like the fourth pick and he was not, he's like a journeyman now, but it's like, there's always, everyone always thinks that that's the guy. Like I'm sure Scotty Barnes, there's a lot of pressure on him to be that guy. And like, he had a kind of a rough year last year, right? Most, most people are calling him bust right now. Scotty? Yeah. Dang. I want him to be good. I like him a lot though. I still think he has some potential to grow. A guy that I'm not too keen on is Wemby. You know what? I've heard that. I've heard that from other people. Some people think Wemby might not be good, but... What do you think? I don't know. 
Have you seen last him in college? Time, or last time I had an opinion on somebody, it was Davis Mills, and I thought he was going to be good, and that was a disaster. But also, like, I don't know. Like, it's too hard. It's all luck, right? You got to hope he can bulk up and he's ready for the NBA, and, like, you hope it translates over. But we don't know enough about his style within the NBA, so it's, you just got to wait and see. Mm-hmm. A guy that I'm very excited for would be Chet. What about you? I just bought a Chet Holgram Select Refractor Auto BGS 95 on eBay. That's cool. Yeah, I think it was I think it was like 400, but it it was a great card. I just I like him a lot. I think Chet I like will be Chet good. Too. I don't know. I bought it. You know what? Gonna see what happens. I could be risking it, but I have some. I have some. You know, I like buying NBA right now. This is the good time to buy NBA because it's off season. Give it three to five more weeks. Everyone's going to forget about football, and it'll be NBA. Anthony Edwards' stuff has been going up, I think. Oh, yeah. He's been playing oh, really yeah. well with Team USA. I like him. Everyone's saying that he's going to have a breakout season. Yeah. He's good. And then, I mean, Jason Tatum, Giannis, those guys are always good. I bought, you know, who else? You, I don't know. Keldon Johnson, he could be good, but <laughs> it's because Wemby, you know, everyone. Yeah, it's because of Wemby. Who everyone's eyes are going to be on these people, on these players. So it's going to be interesting to see. Sohan could be good. I like him. His stuff is, gosh, his stuff went up. He was like a twenty dollar rookie auto, I think, like for some of the numbered stuff or whatever. And now he's like fifty to hundred. His stuff went up, and a lot of people are holding his stuff. He's a cool yeah. player, though. Hundred percent. A guy that I'm actually pretty high on is Maffin right now. Like Maffin. Who? Maffin. Who's up? Benedict Maffin. Oh, Math- from- oh yeah, yeah, from the Pacers. Yeah, yeah. actually, he, he could be good. I bought I bought one card of him. <laughs> Sounds like you buy cards of everyone. <laughs> I know, I buy everyone. I mean, I'm just thinking my recent purchases. I spent a lot. I've been buying a lot because the National's over, so I've been buying a lot of stuff. I'm just trying to think of my purchases. Um... I mean, I buy cards all the time, though. I've been doing this. I mean, obviously, you know this. I've been doing this a long time, but it's always fun to buy new stuff. I love going on Whatnot and eBay and buying, so. Me too. Especially Whatnot. I go there late at night and just start buying stuff. (laughs) I've never seen you on. For sale or for buying? For buying. (laughs) I usually sneak. I mean, I guess you can. I mean, I guess I hop into random streams, but do you go live on there? Yeah. Oh, dude, I'll hop in and buy. You gotta link me to your next stream. I'll 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 hop in. That. I usually pop into streams that people are always screaming. Oh my god, really? Yeah, it's fun though. People are like, Mojo! No, honestly, that's what happens. It's pretty funny. And then some people are like, Are you buying? You buying? <laughs> yeah. So your next show is gonna be the Toronto Expo. Might be CSC. What's that? Canadian Sports Card Show. When's that? Um, it's September 24th. Oh, it's coming up. Mm-hmm. Okay. And you've never, you're not, you're not going to, have you been to a show in the States yet? No. Man, okay. Got to go to the next I show. wish. Does your, do any of your parents collect? No, I wish. I'm, try, I'm trying to get my dad into it. My, my, my parents don't either. My dad doesn't understand this hobby at all. I was, tr- I, I tried getting my dad to watch SCI. <laughs> oh, yeah. Like his S Switch Code University videos. Yeah. <laughs> but, it, but he fell asleep. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I mean, you know what? My parents never collected. My mom supported it. My dad thinks it's an interesting hobby. But I mean, interesting the way he doesn't understand it, but he knows that we <laughs> like it. So it is definitely an interesting hobby. <laughs> yeah. So many things to do and talk about. Yeah, I think that's the best part. I do think the relationships in this hobby are are so important. Like people don't people some people get caught up in transactions, which is like I sold this card, I bought this card, I trade this card, but I'm telling you right now, like with my travel and experience, uh Yeah, the, the people are the best part. The people, they teach you so much about life and like cards and business and economics and you learn about their like how they got through what they got through and what they do outside of cards. And I think that's huge. And relationships in our hobby, if you can build the relationships, they'll be, I mean, they'll be there for a lifetime. Yeah. 
even from this podcast alone, you taught me a lot of things. <laughs> That's great, man. Yeah, I love it. You've taught me a lot too, man. I mean, I've never, I, I hosted a podcast one time. I did 10 episodes. My claim to fame was I had Nat Turner, who's the PSA, you know him from PSA. Yeah. So I had him on my podcast and then I stopped because I was, I stopped the podcast, the Mojo Sports podcast, because I knew we needed to keep going on YouTube. And I'm glad looking back, I'm glad we did, but I know that there's definitely successful podcasters. It's just not my, it's not my thing. I like, I like, I like being on them and, you know, Mm -hmm. When people need help with, with like stuff like this, I try to get on there and, you know, voice about the hobby. What do you think of like the fanatics thing? Like fanatics getting NFL now? (laughs) Yeah. I mean, apparently, I think, I I think everybody in the hobby, like we got to, you know, panic slowly, you know, you don't know what's going to, we don't know what's going to happen. Right. You think that like the panini boxes, like if you had them sealed by a football, you think that they'll be worth value or not? I think I think they're still going to produce. I think there's still going to be some stuff there. I think eventually P- P- Panini is going to have to give it up. I think Fanatics is just like trying to pull it right now. But I think the hobby has not been marketed very well with Panini. And mm-hmm. I think Fanatics eventually taking over, they will market this hobby like unlike anything we've ever seen. And, you know, I understand there's, you know, there's a lot of speculation about fanatics and that's fine. There's always speculation. You know what people don't realize there was speculation when Panini took over in 09, 10. And you know what Panini did to upper deck Panini told Panini they said demolished no, them. they destroyed them. Just like fanatics is going to do to Panini. It's like you you're mad at the people that are doing to do the same thing that happened to you. And when I first collected, I was like shocked. Cause I was like, Oh, aren't there upper deck cards? And like, it was the last thing of upper deck, upper deck were they were making their last products they were putting so many you could get 20 jersey cards in one box because they had to get rid of them in 09 10 upper deck they did oh my god so so, so, so you're getting like 20 lebron james it was crazy i was 14 i was your age opening these and i was in shock but then i knew that panini was and the thing about panini is they started out with you know season update basketball and all these limited basketball and all these things Pin, Upper Deck didn't give them exquisite or any of that because clearly there was a battle. So now Panini, <laughs> I just have this feeling unless Fanatics figures it out, Panini probably could tell Fanatics like, you know what? Why don't you make your own exquisite? Or why don't you make your own national treasures and flawless? Oh, no. That's I don't know, though. You know what? Like, that's speculation, too. But my experience... I want Prism and Optic. That's what I, I know. want. Well, we'll get Tops Chrome back. But my experience with this yeah. is I do think Fanatics will market our hobby well and there's just too much speculation. It's just a topic for everyone to make content on. Like, I don't make content about the stuff like this because I know that we don't know anything. We don't know what's going on behind closed doors. There's so You're much. You're not going- Jeff Wilson. You, you don't have insight. I mean, like, but I think those people are good for the hobby. Like, I like that they report it. I'm just saying for me, it's just not my lane because it's just like, I see my mind and probably people think this too when they're making card show content. I see 20 other people making it. I just don't think I have much to offer on that besides just, waiting for the actual thing to happen but i do like fanatics putting in the door because they will market our hobby unlike anything fanatics and tops they have great access to the players they actually utilize the access and they have events and they're going to give experiences so i think fanatics will do a great job but either they're going to do it asap or they're going to do it in three years but it's going to happen eventually and when our hobby panics for the next three years it's going to be, you're going to see it anyway. So just get ready. I mean, there's not really much you can do. Yeah. Can't wait for Topps Chrome. Topps Chrome Scoot. That's going to go so hard. Yeah. Topps Chrome is going to be sick. What are the topics are there? I can't really think. I need, I want to extend this. I mean, we could ask the audience or ask you, since we're talking about Panini, what do you think the product everyone will remember with Panini? What will they remember? What is the what is the what is the card brand and design? It's I, 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 I think, think probably flawless. Prism or Optic. Prism, I think Optic Prism. And, what about Flawless? No, mm, it's all right. Eminence, I don't know. I just think one. I wonder what people think. Like, what is the product when it's all said and done? has gone. What is the one that everyone remembers? It's got to be Prism. Type type that out to me, and I'll do a Spotify Q and A. <laughs> Just oh, send me down on Instagram. Just send me down on Instagram and I'll just do a Spotify QA when the podcast is uh, uploaded to Spotify. I'll All tell right. you the results. 
yeah, what people say. I mean, yeah, Prism or NT, what is the thing that... Because it is interesting, because everyone, when they think of Upper Deck, you think of Exquisite. Mm -hmm. But the same thing, though, Exquisite was not as produced. There's a lot more NT and Flawless in Prism, so it's a whole... It's a whole thing. Like everyone wants something to be rare until it's just not rare. Like there are mm -hmm. sets from the '94 Upper Deck Baseball, and the guy told us like there was a case hit in the pack, and I'm like, this card's worth two dollars on eBay. It was like <laughs> in 1994, it was a case hit, hit king or whatever it is. I don't know what it is, but it's like I was like, wow. Wasn't that the junk wax era? '94. Yeah. yeah, it is the junk wax. It's also the year I was born. <laughs> <laughs> But I'm just saying, it's crazy. Like, though, like think about what we think is a case hit, and like m m people in 20 years and be like, "Well, that's Panini. It's trash." Or, you know what I mean? Like, some people might not think of like the zebras and the tigers as like, "Oh, this is so cool." I'm sure they'll retain value, but in the back of my mind, I'm like, "What if this was overproduced?" Mm -hmm. I don't know. It's something to think about. You think Fanatics is going to cut down on parallels or do more parallels? I mean, right now hard. there's like over right now there's like over a hundred different parallels. They're doing the taco refractor right now. Wait, what taco refractor? Look on, they have a taco refractor for Taco Tuesdays. It's a taco. <laughs> taco. Please share your screen and show. <laughs> I mean, present. I gotta show. I mean, it's. <laughs> I'm telling you, bro. If you think they're not, they're gonna cut down. It, oh my gosh they're numbered out of five <laughs> how do i share the oh screen my. push present at the bottom next to oh. if you're on computer which i assume you were oh my gosh it's a whole thing <laughs> okay i allowed it i do not oh well, Here we go. oh maybe you have to go like this oh you okay, ready? Well, wait. I, I can't see it. Can That's funny. Nope. Oh, oh, there we go. There we go. Look at this. There we go. Oh my god, there's literally a taco refractor. I don't I think it's I don't know. I think it's weird. Yeah. It looks Crazy. like they're just photoshopped in. Look, they're off centered. <laughs> they're totally this card would get like a PSA six, probably. Anyway, that's the taco refractor. So to answer your question, do I think there's going to be more parallels? They're already putting out taco refractors. <laughs> Hot dog refractors, hamburger refractors. I see it all coming. Donut refractors, I'll buy them all. <laughs> oh, my God. But, yeah, to answer your question, like, I mean, they're – the thing is, Fanatics is new to this hobby. Like, that's another thing people need to realize. They're sorting their – they're sorting themselves out. They're hiring a bunch of people. They're learning what works. They're trying to figure out – they're trying to figure out how to make money right now because they're going to be in the first, you know, series of business with cards. There's a lot of business operations going on that people don't realize. So they're trying to figure it out and they will. Fanatics will figure it out just like Panini figured it out. But I think Fanatics will be more favorable in the long run. Have you spoke to anyone at Fanatics? Like, do you know anyone? Yourself? I mean, I know some people there, but I just observe them from the outline and like also just like just seeing them from the outside looking in. I just kind of like business one on one. Cool. Like, what's the craziest card that you've ever seen at a show yourself? Actually, uh, but that you think was like crazy. I think that holding that Mickey Mantle SGC ten or the PSA nine was pretty crazy. That's like six to ten million dollars. SGC ten or was it SGC nine? I think it was SGC nine. Maybe it was. I saw that video. It was at the national. It was at the National. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've held so many cards like that. And I'm like, oh, I held the Web and Yama Super One of One, first one ever signed. That was crazy because the security guard. Yeah. No, the no, the true one of one. Did you hear what Fanatics is doing? They're flying people out oh, to have the green. I think it's great. I think it's a cool experience. I think they're tapping into experience. They have so much access. Panini didn't do enough of that, man. And they <laughs> they just like they don't. They don't market. You think that or... game patches are coming back or no? One hundred percent. Fanatics has already tapped into game use. They own so much equipment. I think experience is the key for what Fanatics needs doing here, and they're gonna crush it. People don't realize like it's just the beginning. Panini didn't do that. They didn't. I mean, I was a Panini consumer. I never felt like special. I never felt like 
I never felt connected to Panini. To I, I, as sad as it sounds, and like I've been a consumer for fourteen years, fifteen years now. It's like I always like felt. I don't know. There just could have been more. There always could have been more, and I felt like I don't. I didn't ever have like a chance to voice that. What do you think about like Leaf CEO stepping down? I think I saw that or something. I mean, man, I knew Brian for a long time, like for my memorabilia background, and I know him, uh, and we've done deals. That uh, jaw is actually from Leaf. Is I it? it from a guy who opened up a box of Leaf a basketball box. Wow. Yeah, so I just bought it off him. Oh damn. eBay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think Leaf, but Leaf is transitioning. I think they should. A company could easily take advantage of Leaf and like use those celebrity contracts to put celebrity cards in. And it's, I, I'm thinking that's what's going on behind the scenes. I don't know, but Brian Gray was a part of that and he made Leaf what it is today. What do you think about like the Wander Franco incident? Shocked. I'm shocked. Did I, you I, saw your Franco or not? I still have my, <laughs> I still have my Wander Franco and I'm shocked that that happened. Are you going to keep him or are you just going to just? I mean, I'm I mean, trying to just sell him. To the everyone best sell his cards immediately. They're going to keep going down. I think the situation's like, I, I mean, I'm it's just third. It's done. Like he's done. He'll never, he'll never play again. It's worse than Tatis cheating. It's worse than I most. I don't, most... I don't follow baseball, but <laughs> I know Tatis juiced. He used the juicers or whatever. I guess I don't know. Oh. But this is a whole another ball game. But yeah, Wander Franco sell everything now or just like, I, I even have some rookies that i just i was just like i put them in all in a stack and it was like this high last night i'm just like oh my gosh oh my god like why did i invest in these <laughs> i just i bought lots i had them and then i have his heritage rookie auto too i heard that otani got injured yeah Except for the season well i still think he'll win mv he's gonna win mvp it was the end of the season anyway I don't think he should ever pitch again. I think he should be a hitter, call it a day, and enjoy a great career as a DH or whatever he's going to do. If he gets Tommy John surgery, he'll be out for the year, and like that'll be horrible. Mm-hmm. What do you think about the new the Hall of Fame class of – Basketball? Yeah. All my childhood right there, the boys. No, like, no I feel like Joakim Noah and stuff. Wait, he's in there? for this year. Oh, he's not gonna make it. The the best guys are Vince Carter. That's the best guy in the list. Didn't? Oh gosh, who else? That was for next year, right? Yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, I think they'll add on to it though. Hopefully. Yeah. <laughs> I doubt Joakim Noah is gonna make it. I don't think so, but he was a fun player to watch. I always liked him. Do you have any MJ rookies yourself or no? Never own that yet. I need to. I want to get a Michael Jordan auto too. Never, you never own that. I'm surprised. No, I mean I have a Michael Jordan signed jersey. So I mean, but I want like an autograph, like a real like. Show, show me the signed jersey. <laughs> I have it in the. I have it in my vault. What's behind there? Is that Kareem? What is right it? There? Which one? The one That's underneath the Funko Pops. Oh, that's Peyton Manning, and then the other one's a Drake autograph. I got with him when he was at a Kings. Oh, Rockets. Drake! He signed my sign, so I cut it out and put it into a frame. And then those are all Funkos. That's actually sick. Funko. Are the Funkos signed or no? Some of them are, yeah. I'm, I like the Funkos. It's like a personal thing. I just I enjoy collecting them. I'm waiting for all the dogs to come out. <laughs> oh, the dogs! It is. It was supposed to come out Friday. Everyone said it's going to come out Friday. Wow. I got trolled. I woke up at 6.30 in the morning to check. And then I woke wow. up at 6.30 today to just check too. Wow. It didn't come out. What are they, Dog Funkos? Nah. It's a new album for all the dogs. Oh, Drake. Yeah. He's making a new album. Yeah. Oh, my God. Okay, I'm going to be checking for it too. I thought you said like dogs like a Funko dog. Like a like a golden retriever Funko. <laughs> on two separate pages there, bro. That's pretty funny. That's Sometimes, Jay. That's funny. 
let's do uh let's do one more question or a wrap up and then uh i'm gonna get i'm gonna take care of some stuff 100 percent. what do you got for me honestly i think that would be it that's um, it i think so it was a 40 minute podcast pretty good right 40 minutes yeah all thank right, you like so it. much mojo for joining us today content. yeah of course bro Guys, be sure to check out Mojo Sports, as it says down below. As you Mojo guys Sports been reading, LLC yeah. on Instagram. YouTube is Mojo Sports. Check me out on Whatnot. And hit us with a follow if you have any questions about the hobby or you want to just talk about what you collect. Hit me up. I'm always into it. Also, check out tropiccollects.com and follow the podcast. Let's um, go. Make sure we follow him. Let's get into 1,000 <laughs> followers on the podcast. Let's go, guys. You heard it from Mojo. Okay, guys, this is me, Aaron, signing off, and this is Mojo signing off. And we'll Bye, see you all next time. Peace. Yeah.